Hello everybody and uh, thanks for viewing the ketogenic fasting project. I'm Tom and I was just watching a video from Vegetable Police. He's a well-known YouTuber, used to be vegan and uh, he was talking, he's gone carnivore and he was talking about the issues he's having. I think his, uh, this particular um, video is titled something about lying, you know, everybody's lying and stuff like that and uh, I think uh, I really empathize with him because the guy really just wants to get healthy he went vegan because he wanted to be healthy and then he found out he was uh, he was getting sicker you know he went to the nth degree he moved overseas and where he had access to fruit and all that you know because I, I think he's from uh, Canada and it's it's pretty cold there and you know uh, it's harder to get fresh fruit so you know, I really applaud the guy's effort, you know, and uh, as much as, you know, some vegans could be really confrontational, um, I think a lot of them just want to be healthy. It's like a lot of people in, on carnivore. You know, you see plenty of people on carnivore who are really healthy and really uh, fit and, you know, everything's hunky-dory. And I think a lot of those people were fit and healthy before they got there. And this is just giving them a finer edge, you know. People like myself, um, you know, I came to carnivore from keto. It just seemed like a, a natural move. Uh, I was just gravitating towards eating more more meat and less plant-based foods. It just seemed like the right thing to do. And this whole movement came along at the right time. And uh, it's definitely been better for me. But I think uh, Vegetable Police, I believe his name is Casey, yeah, I think his the crux of his complaint was that he's trying, but he's having digestive issues, and he doesn't necessarily feel that great. And he want he wants to feel good, and he wants to be healthy. And I don't think anybody really should be putting up with digestive issues. If if you make a you make a change and uh, you know a big change in your diet, you should maybe expect some short term digestive issues, but they should be short term. And I think just about anybody uh, who's part of the 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 sort of cutting edge here of of changing up their diet and nutrition and low carb and carnivore and all that will all tell you that yeah nobody should really be having long term digestive issues. There's there's obviously something wrong if that's the case. Now in my case, I've been tinkering with the diet a lot. My main goal is to beat autoimmune disease I when I first started when I first went low carb I had terrible arthritis that was my biggest problem and it seems to be gone so uh, that happened before I even got to carnivore that was one on a ketogenic diet it seemed to be gone but I still have psoriasis I know I like to I've showed this before that's a good example now that's actually gotten quite a bit better and um, tomorrow morning, I actually have an appointment with the people at Paleo Medicina, or uh, I believe it's now the International Center for Dietary Intervention or something like that is the new name. So anyways, I'm going to, you know, I decided I could, uh, when I found out I could just, you know, consult with them online, I was like, wow, I can just cut to the chase, learn how to do the PKD diet correctly. Um from the experts, you know, the people that have the published results in in uh, not only beating autoimmune diseases, but, you know, obviously diabetes and cancer. They had some pretty remarkable results with some very serious cancers. So anyways, uh, I, when I found out I could learn about it, the diet from them to get their, their professional advice, I jumped on board and that's going to happen tomorrow. And on the way, some of the things I've learned uh, after reading their literature and reviewing their interviews and stuff like that, is they recommend a, a goal of about two to one uh, fat ratio, so two to two to one uh, fat over protein ratio in this diet. Which I was I was not eating that high of fat. Uh, in fact, I'd just gone through a long experiment where I was eating leaner and leaner meat to see what happened. Because um, I'm really I you know it's it's one thing to uh to be healthy and just you know pick out some meat and you know eat it and realize and, and feel better and it's another thing to conquer lingering issues now the 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 problem with that i have is 
presumably leaky gut syndrome or increased intestinal permeability and in theory that could be healed up and then your diet can be quite a bit more uh, diverse you know it won't it shouldn't matter so much whether I eat uh, eggs or not or the protein to fat ratio or whatever those things should be or even eating cheese and stuff like that so anyways uh, hopefully you know it's kind of ironic because after I made the appointment, the psoriasis started getting a lot better, but I was also had learned more about the diet pre consultation here. So, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of one of those things. I'm sure a lot of people have been sick and made an appointment to see the doctor and they're like, time comes to go to the appointment. They're like, God, I feel a lot better. I don't even know if I should go, but I've already, I've already paid for it and I want to learn to do this right anyway. So I'm definitely going to follow through. I, I posted too that I did the uh, the PEG 400 test, and I'm sending in a, a sample for PEG 400, which is a, a medical test to test the level of intestinal permeability. So I'm all on board now. Of course, I just did a a body scan and a calcium uh, score or a, a carotid or sorry coronary artery calcium score, which came out to seven. So. Anyways, um, I've got all that going on, but I, I, I thought it would be a good opportunity to address people like Casey who um, are trying to do this, they're trying to do this for the right reasons, and they're having their doubts about other people and their advice. And I think I think that uh, more people who have serious uh, um, problems should talk about how they work through them um, more. You know, uh, one of the only really great examples is probably Michaela Peterson that I know of because, I mean, there are others. I mean, Amber O'Hearn got through her issues, you know, but like nine years ago. And, of course, there's uh, Lier. Uh Uh-oh, I forgot her last name. But, uh, anyways, they're a little different than um, perhaps Casey. And and, uh, I think that more people talked about it would be better. So that's why I brought it up. So if I if I knew Casey and I was telling him, I'd, I'd tell him to play around with the ratio. And I know he's talking about eating a little bit of meat. He had like, I don't know, he, I think he said like 100 grams of meat or something. And uh, and then I'll, he was frying in a bunch of lard or something. So one of the things that I honestly did feel uh, worked better was using beef fat. And I don't buy like uh, rendered tallow or anything like that. Um, I just get the fat trimmings right from the butcher. In fact, uh, I was on my way back from picking that up when I was listening to his video. And uh, I call the butcher in the morning. You know, where if I'm at work, I call one place. If I'm at home, I call a different place, you know. And I just ask him, hey, do you guys have any fat, uh, beef fat, you know, trimmings? You know, can I get uh, today? I asked for five pounds. They're like, yeah, okay, sure. Uh, you know, come by in an hour or whatever. And so I went over there and they, they weren't even going to charge me for it. So they gave me a five pound tray. I think one time I got seven and a half pounds. I didn't even specify how much I wanted. And the, I just happened to be at the market in the morning and the meat cutter was back there. And he's like, whoa, let's do some shopping and come on back by and see me. And he gave me two massive trays of of uh, beef trimmings and he didn't, he didn't charge me. Then uh, about a week ago, I went to another store. And uh, they charged me a buck fifty a pound, but you know, a dollar fifty a pound for 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 that kind of caloric intake is awful cheap. And I know I don't mind paying. And of course, you know, I want to go to the store and buy some food anyway. So I bought a nice thick T-bone to go with that uh, to go with that fat. And I actually just ate some of that T-bone raw, and it was fantastic. So. That's another thing you might want to try, Casey. Uh, you know, if you can get meat that you don't think is rotten or contaminated, you might want to try just eating a little piece of uh, raw meat. You know, some of that fat is actually pretty hard to chew raw, but, uh, you know, the Eskimos just swallow it. If you cut it into small pieces so you don't have to worry about choking and you're not worried about it being, um, you know, rotten or contaminated or whatever, you know, there's all kinds of people that eat raw meat. So it's never made me sick. So um, a lot of people find that eating raw meat and uh, particularly beef uh, and and lamb or sheep fat. Um, I don't know if you watch these videos with the the people like the Maasai and stuff like that. Um, or you read the uh, stories uh, about the explorers and stuff. You you hear about uh, 
rendered or even raw uh, fat from animals like uh, caribou or reindeer, yaks and sheep and beef being used as medicine. So maybe there's something to it, you know. Maybe it's just that that easy on the stomach or that easy on the intestines, really, you know. And the other thing, Casey, you might want to do is see if you can figure out how good your stomach acid is because it isn't, you really need a good, strong stomach acid. You know, a healthy person is theoretically around a pH of one and a half or so. Could be a little bit higher number. It could be a little more little more alkaline than that but uh you know that might be one thing that might be making it harder for you to digest but i empathize with you man nobody needs to be uh miserable um a lot of a lot of people come to this diet uh with digestive issues and they don't necessarily go away overnight so anyways good luck with that and uh, maybe just kind of go to beef fat and just ramp up the fat content slowly and uh you know omad uh, you know, works for a lot of people and I have a lot of days where I only eat once, but, uh, that kind of depends on my activity level. So if I, if I'm lifting a lot of weights, I like to, uh, not eat heavy before, but then I like to put some more in me in the tank afterward, you know? So, um, and, and then some days I'm just, I can't eat enough at one time. It's just how it is, you know? So don't be a slave to OMAD, you know, figure out what, uh, what type of uh, meat your body, your stomach, your intestines like, and how much fat you should eat. Figure all that out, and then do the OMAD thing later. You know, the I, I don't think the OMAD thing is something you really you really need to force unless you really are desperate for weight loss, which I don't think you are. And uh, I think it'll just come naturally later when you figure out how much you can eat and when you can eat it. You know. So, anyways, uh, I hope that helps somebody out there. I don't I have no idea if uh, Vegetable Police will ever watch this or anything like that, but I'll, I'll send it. I'll send it over to his comments and see what he has to say. And, uh, anyways, good luck with that, and I hope you feel better. And uh, don't don't think you have to live with all this distress. <laughs>